Hey, good morning, guys. Okay, so hopefully yesterday you were able to uh, watch the two uh, series of videos um, on the Montgomery bus boycott and then of the desegregation in Little Rock, Arkansas. I'll just go through some things that I think are important about those events that you know I would have covered in class. Um, first of all, the two names, Rosa Parks, who was the woman who didn't give up her seat, and uh, Martin Luther King, a young uh, preacher in that town who organized and, and was the voice of the boycott. Remember, a boycott is when you refuse to use a service uh, hoping that the company will change. You know, you don't show up, you don't buy tickets, and then the company starves financially. And then they look at their policy, and, you know, the way that that was done in the South was demeaning to African-American people, that you had to sit in the back of the bus. And if you went to get your ticket at the front or pay your money, then you had to leave, and you had to go back around and get onto the back of the bus, uh, those two doors toward the back on those city buses. So, you know, this was something that was going on in all the states. So this was something that chipped away with it. But these people walked to work and carpooled and all this thing for over a year. And finally, it, it worked. So those are the names. Another thing that's like trivia about this that's kind of interesting is Rosa Parks was not in the blacks, was not in the white section um, originally. The way that it worked is when the white section filled up and there were more white riders, then the first section of African Americans in the, in the colored section, they called it, um, had to get up, all four of them, and then go to the back and, and probably stand. Um, and this is what happened, where there was a transition. We're going to turn the black section into the last row of the white section. And this is where Rosa Parks was like, wait, there's one guy. I'm on the other side of the bus, and you're telling us we all have to get up. The other three people got up, and she didn't. So there we go. Um, it was also a planned protest. All right, this is not the, the story that sometimes, you know, teachers tell really quickly about, oh, she was just really tired and didn't want to put up with this crap, and, you know, no, it was a planned protest. She even knew the bus driver. So there's a lot of uh, interesting things there. She knew that bus driver would flip and there'd be a big event. So that's uh, what, what what's kind of going on with that. So it was a little more complicated than, you know, some of these videos. There's always a great part to the story. Um, anyway, um, I'm going through some of my PowerPoint slides, but the purpose of that boycott, you know, was, was really to, uh, you know, financially hurt a company. Students can't boy boycott school, you know, you have to have your buying power. There's different ways of protesting. Okay, so Martin Luther King, you know, inspiration, and from then on, he's going to go and, and attack different causes. Remember, this doesn't all happen at once. You know, they're going after different things and, and drinking fountains and buses and schools. It, it, it's a, an approach that over years takes a long time. Let's talk about the uh, other subject, though, which is in Little Rock, Arkansas. What happens in Little Rock, Arkansas is the governor says, okay, the Supreme Court says we have to integrate, but we'll do it as slow as we possibly can. In other words, we'll say, ah, we need more time, we need more time. And the Little Rock Nine are a group of students who, with their parents uh, involved as well, tried to integrate on the first day of school. And they were met with horrible resistance. You know, the white community at their high school, which was now going to be everyone's high school, decided that they were going to, uh, you know, put up stage a protest. And, and the students were not let in. You know, they got separated and taunted, and there's all sorts of things. If you watch the video that uh, I attached about the Little Rock Nine, um, forgiving their tormentors, it, you can see them all now as adults. They were your age, you know, they really were. And, and they, they were, you know, something could have happened. People could have gotten killed. But they had to be escorted in because the President of the United States said, you know what, we got a law and it's going to happen. And they actually sent in the, uh, the army to make sure that those kids got in. And they were in the hallways at school and they were uh, there for, for a while. Um, and, uh, you know, a lot of other schools took a long, long time to, to do this. So it's not something that magically changed in, in one year. Uh, school segregation in some cases, you know, you could argue is, is in a way still going on because of where people live, you know, and uh, the poorer schools don't get as much money as the richer schools. A lot of your money for school comes from your, uh, you know, your taxes and stuff. So anyway, um, you know, to go through that, the Little Rock Nine are these these heroes, and when you look at the videos and watch some of the, um, you know, pictures of, you know, the, these kids, you know, being escorted in with, with men with guns protecting them. That's uh, how this had to happen. So another very, very interesting story that um, goes on. Um, I'd love to do, have done more with it, and you will get more in high school. <clears throat> Let's go so, through some vocabulary, though. Um, civil disobedience 
is something that is, is practiced during this time. And uh, civil disobedience are, are nonviolent protests against, some, uh, against an unjust law. So to be civil is to, to do something without you know, creating a fight. Uh, and to be disobedient is to break a law. So example, if a black person went to a white drinking fountain and purposely uh, took a drink, that's civil disobedience. What's going to happen? Well, a mob could get you and beat you and the police could come and arrest you and things like that. So that, that's where Martin Luther King um, taught people uh, this way of, of, of protesting. He ended up in jail a lot and a lot of other people did too. So um, that's one of the things. Uh, a sit-in is something we'll get into a little bit more, especially tomorrow. But a sit-in is when you go to a place that's segregated and you, like in a section, black diners and white diners and, and, and where you had to sit in a separate section. A lot of it was at bus stations and, and bus stops and stuff. Anyway, a sit-in is when you go and you purposely go to the wrong section and you refuse to move. The cops come, you, you know, you, you let them handle you, but you don't fight back, you don't yell, you don't spit. And uh, you can even link arms to, to, to stop from being arrested, but you don't push back physically and you don't say anything either. So it, these are tactics that, that create an awful lot of tolerance to authority. If you're not a person who can keep your cool when the cops come, uh, you're not going to be good. Martin Luther King's not going to want you there. He's going to want people there that are, that are going to be peaceful but resistant. Um, so what you'll see is a lot of this uh, going on where you see people getting arrested purposely. Uh, I have some pictures of sit-ins blocking the entrance of a store that, that won't allow certain people in because of their race. And uh, a lot of marches. Martin Luther King becomes a target. I mean, they, he, they try to assassinate this guy several times. So um, I'm going to post a, a couple of videos about sit-ins. I want you to see the lunch counter sit-ins, and I'll, I'll, uh, the video will summarize that, as well as um, something called the Freedom Rides. The Freedom Rides were designed for um, people, usually in the north, to support segregation. They got on buses and they went to the South to join in these protests, whether they were to sit in the wrong section or to be in a parade. Uh, and when the Southerners heard about the Freedom Rides and the Freedom Buses, these were buses like a, you know, like a Greyhound bus coming down South full of people from the North, um, those buses met with a lot of resistance. People waited at bus stops, and when those people got off in the South, uh, they were attacked many times. There were people killed. So the uh, sit-ins and the lunch, uh, I'm sorry, the sit-ins, the lunch counter protests, and the freedom rides are, are some of the topics we're going to be talking about. Again, these are things that happened starting after World War II, going through the 1940s, the 1950s, and into the 1960s. So uh, I think that's probably good for today. All I'm asking you to do is watch these videos. I got people with a ton of zeros that just can't even press play and watch a video. If you're doing it, you're doing the right. You're doing the right thing, and you're getting credit. If you're not, uh, you know, well, you might not be seeing this, but <laughs> pass it on to those people. Come on, put on a video. You got to watch it for ten minutes. You got summer coming up, but we're not asking a lot. All right. Hope you like my little Otto Frank mustache. All right. I don't know if I'll grow something back or not. I don't know. Okay. See you guys later.